Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this service of worship at Emmanuel Church this morning. We're very pleased to have Mourna taking our service this morning, and we welcome all those who are on technical gadgets of one sort or another and hope that you hear it all loud and clear. Um, we're very pleased to have it. Pray for Mourna because I think it's the first time you've felt you've been on all this technology, so um, it is a bit concerning when you've not done it before. So, um, I have one or two notices. First of all, remember the families who have funerals this week. Tomorrow we have the Thanksgiving service for our beloved friend, Mourna, um, Maria, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry about that, for M Maria. Well done, Carol. Um, Maria, she was such a lovely friend to so many of us and was with us in fellowship so recently. The service here is at 11.30. It is a Thanksgiving service. There are refreshments afterwards. But remember the family too as they gather at the crematorium before that for the committal. On Tuesday, we have a service too for Catherine Harper. Catherine probably is not known to many, but please remember her family as they gather at the main chapel at the crematorium at noon tomorrow, on Tuesday, sorry, noon on Tuesday, and that is being followed by a burial in the cemetery there. If anyone is able to go, please join us at that service. It would be good to have representation from the church. And then Mourna has given me two notices. These are for training um, of varying kinds. February the 2nd, from 2 p.m. to 4.30 at the Broadway United Church. This is a training session with Andy Twilley from the Southern Synod. And um, every, there are notices, I think, about this in the magazine. And then on the 26th of February, um, Mourna is leading a service at the hospital. Now, we have a, a group of hospital services, one which Broadway are taking, one which St Barnabas are taking, and one which we are taking, and they actually follow each other. Um, we're fortunate, we have many singers when we take that service, but both St Barnabas and Broadway would be glad to have some support from extra singing. So those are 3 p.m., at the hospital, so that particular one is the 26th of February, if you're able to give support to Mourna uh, for that. So, shall we have a moment or two of quiet prayer as Mourna leads us into worship? Praise God. Good morning, friends. Good morning. How are you all? Lovely. I am so delighted and very thankful to Lord our God that again in this new year, uh, today, uh, this is just a new year, isn't it? Today is 29th of January, so we are still in New Year vibes. And uh, I just want to remind you that God has given us this life. 
and he sent his only begotten son that we can get eternal life life in abundance and today i am so delighted that uh, so many friends are here i welcome you all and today i brought good news to you because many times in our lives we are hearing bad news are you with me yeah so so many negativity is around us so many negative news all the time but today we are so grateful to god because he is good god and he has given us life so we can celebrate we can help one another and we cannot do that unless we will abide in him and i am pretty much sure that all of my friends here my friends who are watching online and those friends who will watch may god give us wisdom may god help us and guide us that we could understand him his word which is the light of our path uh, so we could understand his word and today uh, have you seen some fruit before okay if you let me know what you have seen before on the slide which fruit grapes. grapes yes yeah wine so i want to read it jesus christ said i am the vine you are the branches if you remain in me and i in you you will bear much fruit if we can say all much fruit can you say it much much fruit much fruit just i want us to say much fruit well done well done apart from me you can do nothing and nothing mean nothing so my dear friends today and you can see some fruits i made them <laughs> so uh, we will learn later on about these fruit Th these fruit are holy spirit fruit so my dear friends this is the day that the lord has made we will and i want to see this joy and gladness on your faces even on uh, those friends who are watching us because god is good god so if you can stand please stand and we will sing our first hymn beautiful hymn to god be the glory <laughs>
because we are in the presence of the Holy Spirit. We are in the presence of our Father. We are in the presence of our Jesus Christ, who made this promise with us that I will never leave you nor forsake you. And he is proving this day by day. Dear loving and gracious Father, as a one family, we are coming into your holy presence. We want to assure you that we love you, we praise you, and we worship you because you are worthy of it. Father God, today we are so delighted that again we can praise and worship you, we can offer our prayers, we can sing your praises, and we can listen from your word. And Father God, we are so thankful to you for each and every blessing. And I commit all of my brothers and sisters who are present here, who are watching us online, and in future, who will watch us online. Control on us. Father God, be our guide. Give us your wisdom. Give us all of your power, all of your strength, that we can understand you. We can celebrate you. And Father God, we are so thankful to you that without any fear, we can praise and worship you. We can read your scripture. We can talk about your scripture. So thank you so much, God, for being with us. And guide us and lead us and direct us as we are moving ahead into this service under the Holy Spirit. So we ask all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. So now is the time for today's readings and I have selected two readings for us. So I will request my friends Jim and Sandy, if you can please come forward and lead us in today's readings. And please listen carefully. I will ask you some questions later on. Thank you so much. Don't know the answers. <laughs> uh, the first reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, reading verses 1 to 9. I am the real vine. And my father is the gardener. He breaks off every branch in me that does not bear fruit. And he prunes every branch that does bear fruit. So that it will be clean and bear more fruit. You have been made clean already by the teaching I have given you. Remain united to me. And I will remain united to you. A branch cannot bear fruit by itself. It can do so only if it remains in the vine. In the same way, you cannot bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will bear much fruit, for you can do nothing without me. Those who do not remain in me are thrown out like a branch and dry up. Such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire where they are burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, then you will ask for anything you wish and you shall have it. My Father's glory is shown by your bearing much fruit and in this way you become my disciples. I love you just as the Father loves me. So, remain in my love.
The second reading is from Colossians 2, verses 6 to 10. So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world, rather than on Christ. For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, and in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every, over every power and authority. Thank you. Thank you so much. May God bless you. And now we will sing another hymn beautiful hymn based on the same theme, Abide in Me, 141 from Singing the Faith. to you, 
our Lord, our God, and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. It is written in the scripture about the word of the Lord, the grass withers and the flower fades. But the word of our God will stand forever. Amen. We know that everything will be perished, will be finished. But the word of our Lord will remain forever. And we are going to learn from this powerful word of the Lord. And today, as I told you that I brought good news for all of us. That how we can be fruitful, how we can lead a real Christian life according to the scripture, according to all of the guidelines provided by us through the Holy Spirit, by Jesus Christ, his disciples, early church. There are so many examples, but today, and I just want to draw your attention, there are how many gospels are there in the scripture? Four. And all of the gospel writers, they have written gospels uh, with a specific uh, theme. And theme of John, which we are going to learn today, John chapter 15, first nine verses, theme of John writing his scripture, good news for us, he expressed very clearly in uh, chapter 20, verse 31, he said, he, he proclaimed about his purpose, why he is writing all of the gospel. He said that I am writing all of this gospel because I want to let everybody know who will read it, this gospel, that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. He is the promised one. He is the anointed one. And by believing on him, everyone can get eternal life. He, he emphasizes on life, word life. And uh, you remember John chapter 3 verse 16? You know it by heart. And I will be very delighted if you can say it with me. God so loved eternal life. Praise God. Praise God. And you know that this is uh, this reading which I have selected is chapter 15. This is the longest discourse, farewell discourse of Jesus Christ. Because before his crucifixion, he was talking with his disciples. And do you remember the Last Supper? Do you remember? This, it happened uh, after the Last Supper. And you remember uh, this discourse. Okay, I want to let you know. Please remember. Listen carefully. This discourse is based on chapter 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. This is long discourse. And if, when you will go home, please read chapter 17 because this is beautiful prayer of Jesus Christ, not for only his disciples, but for us also. So it is very encouraging. And today, and Jesus Christ, what he did, he did wonderful job there. Before eating food with them, before last supper, what he did, he washed his, uh, this is beautiful picture of his uh, humbleness. He washed his disciples' feet and he told them that one of you will betray me. And who was that? Judas Iscariot. Yes, you know your Bible. Well done. So my dear friends, and Jesus told them that I am giving you the new commandments. What, what was that? New commandment. Love one another. So uh, just a question. Do you love one another? Yes, yeah. I, I want to appreciate all of you. I am so thankful to God that he brought us here to serve him along
down with you because you are so loving and caring. And my dear friends, this is Christianity. This is the message of Jesus Christ. That new command is love one another. And we need to remember this. And now I want to remind you that first verse is, what is the first verse of today's reading? First reading. John chapter 15, I am the true vine. Okay, you will say it again while I'm drinking it. I am. Well done, well done. I am the true vine. Okay, now again, uh, I, I need to see the time. Okay, I am, you know, there are so many statements. Seven, okay, you need to remember. There are how many statements I am? Five, six, seven. Jesus Christ, in the Gospel of John, Jesus Christ said seven statements, I am. If you remind me any, I will clap for you. I remind me any. I am the bread of life. I am the? Bread of life. Well done, yes, I am the bread of life. Praise God. Well done, Caroline. Yes. And? I am the resurrection of the I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection of the Praise God. Well done. Well done. You know your Bible. Okay. There are seven statements. And now, today, uh, why Jesus Christ said it? I am. I, I want to draw your attention on uh, uh, Old Testament. You know your Old Testament? We need to know. I will remind you. Okay, you know the story of Moses? <clears throat> God selected him. He was chosen by God to deliver his own people from the slavery in Egypt. Egypt. And he, God appeared on him on, in a burning bush. You remember the story? So what happened? He said to God that when people will ask me who sent you, then what I will tell them. So tell me your name. Because name is very important, isn't it? So God told him his name. He said, listen carefully please. God said to him, I am who? I am. I am. This is the reason Jesus Christ, he expressed very clearly his deity. He is God and he is man. So this is the reason we need to remember that Jesus Christ said, and John is so good, he mentioned all of statements of Jesus Christ, I am. So my dear friends, we need to remember that now when Jesus Christ said to his disciples that I am the true wine. Why he said it? Because they were so worried. They were so upset because they left everything for Jesus Christ. They followed him for how many years? Three years, three years. They, they left their families, they left their friends, they left their uh, jobs, and they were just following Jesus Christ. All the time, they, uh, how many they were? Yeah, don't be shy, you know. How many? Twelve, yes, be a show. They were twelve disciples, and now at this stage, when Jesus Christ said that I am the true wine. In the end of chapter 14, you need to see that when you will go home. The last verse, Jesus Christ said, come, let us go from here. They were in an upper room and now they were going to a garden. Can anyone let me know the name of that garden? Yes. Well, well done, yes. They were on the way of Garden of Gethsemane and Jesus Christ, he said to them, now they were 11, because Judas, he left them. You remember the story, all of in what happened in upper room. And they were very sad, and Jesus Christ gave them very beautiful message of comfort. That still, 
physically he won't be present with them but now he will still he will be with them he will encourage them he will give them support he will give them energy and wisdom so this is the reason he said very clearly to them i am the true vine and he jesus christ loves to use analogies word pictures so jesus christ told them and when they heard it obviously they were together 12 but now as jesus told them that one from you one of you will betray me they they were thinking about judas because he was not with them now and they they were just thinking about him so now listen carefully what jesus christ told them he said uh, he gave them a picture that i am the true vine and you are the branches and the branch who will remain in me will produce much fruit but the branch who will not abide in me who will not bring any fruit what god will do father you remember jesus christ always he is mentioned about his father and even this time he said my father is the vine dresser how many people they are doing gardening i am doing gardening show me your hands please lovely good yes i know well done so you are you doing sometimes pruning okay if you can let me know why you are pruning why pruning process is very important for a gardener yes for growth and jesus christ himself he said it very clearly that my father is the vine dresser and he cut off all of the branches those who are not bringing forth any fruit and judas was the same branch remember listen carefully he stayed with jesus christ for men for 3 years like other disciples 11 he heard all of the uh, teaching because if you remember jesus christ uh, ministry consist of three uh, things teaching preaching and healing so he was eye witness of so many miracles of jesus christ and he heard all of the teachings but what happened he was not abide in jesus christ he was not getting energy from the you remember the uh, root root and branches the if a uh, plant can get energy from where from roots and he was not abide in jesus christ he was with him but uh, he was attached but jesus christ he said very clearly that the branch who will not produce any fruit and judas was like that judas was the same branch and what god uh, the father and you remember always uh, jesus christ even told us to pray to god how lord's prayer how you start it our father our father so my dear friends father look at the work or task or responsibility or duty of the gardener what he is working very hard all the time he is doing his job and you remember uh, one of my favorite psalm 121 it says very clearly that god our lord is not sleeping and uh, he is he watches over you psalm 121 says very clearly and my dear friends i want to remind you uh, 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 jesus christ wonderful and very memorable uh, preaching sermon on the mount you remember how many people they know about sermon on the mount you know uh, and if you remember jesus christ in chapter 7 what he said to uh, people he said that on the day of judgment so many people will come to me and they will tell me 
Lord, Lord, we, we have been prophesied in your name. We have done so many miracles in your name. But what Jesus Christ will tell them? He, will, he said that I will tell them that depart from me, I don't uh, know you. So my dear friends, this is very uh, dangerous uh, statement, very sad to know that so many people who are claiming that they are serving the Lord. So Jesus Christ told them in the Sermon on the Mount that beware of false prophets. So my dear friends, we need to abide in him and Father's work is very uh, uh, very much dangerous for those people who are not abide in him for those people who are not bringing forth any fruit for him so what god the father will do he will cut them and my dear friends pruning is very uh, painful procedure for branches for any plant and pruning uh, it is written in the scripture that uh, father prunes through his word sometime through his word and uh, i told you that about the scripture that uh, psalm 119 verse 105 it says your word is a lamp for my feet and light for my path and the writer of hebrews the book of hebrews says very clearly that the word of the lord is two two edged sword so it is so power word is so powerful that it has some impact on us and then the book of the um, book of jeremiah it says about the word that it is a hammer it is a, like a fire and it is hammer that smashes the rock when we are hearing god's word and when we are reading god's word uh, do you have experience that it, it has some effect directly on our heart? It happened many times because it is very powerful. And my dear friends, it, it tells us what kind of life we need to spend, what kind of life we need to lead. As a Christian, as a believer, our life should be according to the scripture. So my dear friends, when God is doing pruning, we need to remember that uh, it is very important and it is for the, our best, our uh, good goodness. And God is pruning because he wants us to bring more fruit. So, and uh, what are the fruits? Okay, I brought some fruit. So if you can see them, can you, or maybe any of uh, one volunteer, if you can read them uh, all of these fruit but remember these are uh, galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23 tells us about the fruit of the spirit so this is fruit of the spirit and we need to know that it is our responsibility to produce these fruit and god god is amazing god he has given all of us so many fruits. So my dear friends, who I need one volunteer who can read them aloud and clear. So my friends here online, uh, they, they, can, uh, they can hear you. One volunteer. Ah, oh, no one. Yes, please. Well done. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. God bless you. If you can read them aloud, please. No, 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 just if you can stand uh, here near the microphone. Yes. Yes, please. And so you can read them. Yes. The first, the first one is kindness. Just read them. Joy, love, and self-control. Goodness. Oh, yes, sorry. Um, goodness. Goodness, peace, patience, fa faithfulness, and gentleness. gentleness. Yes, so now, thank you so much. Thank you, Carrie. God bless you. So we need to, it is not just Carrie's duty to rem remember them all. Okay? She just read them. So, but we all need to 
look after our lives, that how we are leading our lives, and we need to produce these fruit. So my dear friends, if you remember the second reading, it is beautiful reading uh, from Colossians. And uh, Apostle Paul, he wrote 13 letters. You remember? His contribution is amazing in the New Testament. And he formed so many churches. And he, he was writing letters to different churches. And my, uh, you know, uh, um, this internet was not invented yet at that time. No Instagram, no Facebook, no WhatsApp, uh, no Twitter, nothing like that. So people, they were writing letters at that time and P uh, Apostle Paul, he wrote many letters and uh, he emphasizes many times on unity because unity is very important. Not uniformity, but unity and togetherness. And I want to encourage you that you are wonderful people. You, uh, you know, we have East Team, so we are working uh, in a unity and togetherness. So my dear friends, Apostle Paul, he said, he, he is giving us instructions how we can lead our Christian life. He said, walk in him, in Jesus Christ. Walk in him, and further he said, rooted in him. Again, it is kind of, uh, he is giving us beautiful word picture or analogy like Jesus Christ that rooted in him, rooted in uh, Jesus Christ. And then he used a uh, uh, building, built up in him. So my dear friends, we, we will ask God, and you, you remember, Jesus Christ said uh, to um, uh, uh, so many people, so many people were there when he gave his uh, sermon on the mount, and he said to them that enter through the, which gate? Wide gate? No, narrow gate. Enter through the narrow gate. And my dear friends, we need to remember that we, we cannot focus on everything, can you? Uh, I'm uh, using my reading glasses. I cannot focus on everything. When I am uh, uh, reading something or if we are watching on telly, so what we are doing, we are, for, uh, like we are focusing on our tele television screen or phone screen or iPad screen. So my dear friends, Jesus Christ, he told us that we need to focus on our way which is narrow path and uh, another analogy he said that those people who are hearing my sermon hearing my word or reading my verse and act upon on my verse those are my real disciples those are my brothers and sisters so what we need to do whatever we are doing we need to abide in him we need to root it in Him. We need to walk in Him. Whatever we are doing, we need to remember that we are His disciples. And uh, uh, just we will spend a few moments in silence. Close your eyes and we will just think and uh, think on our own life. Don't uh, think about your neighbor. Don't think about your son or daughter. Don't think about anybody, just concentrate on your own life. We will just close our eyes and spend a few moments in silence. Father God, help us and guide us that we could abide in you, we could build in you, we could root it in you. And we ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Now I will request my sister Karen if she can please come forward and lead us in intercessory prayers. Do you have any prayer requests? Anybody? 
Okay, I, I will request my assistant, if you can please come forward. And I, while she's coming, I'm so grateful to all of my friends and uh, brothers and sisters who participated and helped me, especially my brother Alan and my brother Charlie and my sister Joyce. Thank you so much. And my choir. Thank you. It never ceases to amaze me how the Lord works. I wrote these prayers last night and tidied them up, as it were, this morning. And I started off by saying, in our John's Gospel reading today, in verse 7, Jesus says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you will and it shall be done for you. In this spirit, we bring our prayers this morning and I have a response when I pause and say, Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Will you respond, Lord, keep us rooted in you. I am the vine, you are the branches. Lord, keep us rooted in you. Lord, we come to you this morning with many thoughts and prayers in our minds and hearts. We have all had different experiences of your love and care for us and others during this past week. We ask you to use them to help us grow more like you and have an ever-growing love for others and their needs. So many events are happening in our world over which we have no control. So we bring them to you knowing that in your wisdom you can overrule in all things. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Lord, keep us rooted in you. We pray for the situation between Israel and Palestine, the land which you were born into and loved. For those on both sides who have lost loved ones and are mourning their dead, for those who seek vengeance and retaliation, that they may not escalate the situation, but seek a just resolution through negotiation. Be with all those who seek to bring about a peaceful settlement, not just in this conflict, but in all other areas of the world where war and violence are taking place. We name in our hearts those areas which are particularly dear to us as individuals. Many will think of Ukraine, but there are other areas that many people support. So just quietly name them in your heart. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Keep us rooted in you. We pray for all those who seek and strive for justice, for those affected by violence in their neighborhoods and are fearful of going out, for those who bear the scars of violence physically and mentally. Lord, bring peace to our streets and to those who suffer as victims of violence or injustice. Help us to work and to seek to make this a fairer world for all. Make us more aware of what we can do to help those in need in our community and to reach out a loving hand in your name. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Keep, keep us rooted in you. We have been particularly asked to pray today for the Haven School as the current head retires and the process for recruiting a new one takes place. May your guiding hand and the insight of your Holy Spirit be with all those who have the responsibility of this appointment, that the special ethos of, and values of the school be upheld and may continue. Help us to be supportive in prayer and practical ways of this 
and of our own Jenny Wren and Little Wren schools. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Lord, keep us rooted in you. We pray for our church family, for the funeral and thanksgiving service tomorrow for Maria Morris, for Catherine Harper, Harper on Tuesday, and for Betty Webb on the February the 9th. We give thanks for these faithful servants of Christ and for all that they contributed to the life, work, and fellowship of the church over many years. Lord, comfort all who mourn, and may they know your peace and healing in the days ahead. Jesus said, I am the true vine, you are the branches. Lord, keep us rooted in you. We remember those who are unwell, at home, in hospital, in care, those awaiting surgery and treatment or test results. And we give thanks for those recovering after medical treatments and for all those who seek to bring healing and recovery in their professional capacity. May all know the peace and comfort of your presence and the restoring power of your healing. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Lord, keep us rooted in you. And we bring these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Saviour, as we say together the example of prayer which Jesus gave to his disciples and say it in whatever language you are familiar with, you find comes easiest to you. Do we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And this God bless you. And now we will sing our final hymn, beautiful hymn. And before we sing, I want to draw your attention on Peter. Do you remember Judas and Peter? Judas, he, uh, he did very nasty job. And Peter, he also denied. How many times? Three times he denied Jesus Christ. But later on, what he did? Jesus Christ, he recommissioned him. And he served the Lord that with his, he repented. He cried, he repented. And he made his relationship back uh, toward Jesus Christ. And with his first sermon, how many people came into Christianity? 3,000 people with his first sermon. So we need to be like Peter. Like Peter, very much abide in him that we can bring forth fruit of the Holy Spirit. May God bless us and we have Jesus Christ, our friend, along with us. So we, we will sing together what a friend we have in Jesus. Uh, this is hymn number 531 if you want to follow from the book.
So accept our gift and we ask this in Jesus' precious name who is our friend. Amen. Amen. May God bless you. And can we say this again or say this together? All of the blessings. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord Sure.